Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Ruggiano, and in 1988, I was struggling with addiction, and I went into a treatment center. I set up a helpline number, which is 855-963-2113. That's 855-963-2113. That number, phones will be manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you're struggling with addiction, or you know someone that is struggling with addiction, please call that number and let me help. I will be hands-on. I will be personally involved in the person's recovery. They will meet me. They will spend time with me. And I will help them live a life beyond their wildest dreams. I just want to let everybody know the shirts are in, Reform Gangsters. If you want to purchase one, please go to my website, anthonyruggiano.com, and order your shirt. Come get them. They're hot. Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Ruggiano Jr., and I want to welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters. And if you enjoy my content, please click the button and subscribe and ring the bell. It would be greatly appreciated. I want to thank all my Patreon members. Um, become a Patreon member of ReformGangsters.com and get early access to all my content and be part of the show. Um, you members pick what I talk about, which makes it interesting. You know, I'll answer all your questions. Ask and get your mafia history questions answered. You know, we did a poll last week about um, uh, could you go back in time and fix all your mistakes or get 10 million in cash? The blue door was go back in time. That reached 35%. And can you get 10 million in cash reached 65%? So I guess money wins out. Um, you know, that's a tough one for me. I don't know. You know, I, I probably would fix things if I could go back because there was a lot of stuff I need to fix. Well, anyway, um, you know, today someone asked me a question about throughout the years of me being in the street with my father's crew, um, if I had a, a, any interaction with bosses or underbosses and any dealings with them or any run-ins with them, and, you know, and, and I laughed because, you know, I have, you know, even though I was never officially a made member, of the mafia, I was a proposed member, and through my relationship, you know, with my father, who was a very well-known wise guy, you know, and knew all these bosses, um, throughout the years, I met bosses and sat down with bosses, you know, so I'm going to give, uh, talk a little bit about that, you know, but I first also want to talk about, I saw this movie today, I put it on my Instagram, it was a little emotional, I saw The Sound of Freedom, about child trafficking, um, it's horrendous. I mean, it's horrendous what people do to these kids. I, I don't understand it. You know, I don't understand how someone could do that to a child. It's, um, it's disgusting. It's horrible. Um, you know, um, I know how pedophiles are treated in prison and they deserve everything they get, but you know, a lot of people should go see this movie. It's amazing that it took them five years to get this movie out in theaters. I mean, you know, like, um, it just goes to show you who's in power. You know, you got this guy Epstein, he got hung, you know, he hung himself conveniently in, in, in M you know, in MCC in Manhattan. I wonder why, you know, uh, before he cooperated, he hung himself, you know, because the Clintons are involved and the Prince of England's involved and his girlfriend is in jail doing time. She hasn't cooperated because she knows what would happen to her. You know, it's just a whole big thing, you know, uh, it's a whole big uh, setup. I mean, it's crazy how this movie took five years for it to, to get released. Why? Because the guy that did it was a Christian and the guy that accident played Jesus Christ. So what does that make them bad people? The story needs to be told. I mean, it was, it was, it, it, it left me speechless at the end of the movie. It was crazy. Um, and everybody should go see it. Everybody should go see it and everybody should get involved and try to, you know, do what they can because, you know, it's crazy because all this is taking place in, in you know, South America and all these Latin countries, all these third world countries or whatever. And, and, and at the end of the movie, the biggest customer is the United States. So that 
they're kidnapping all these kids in these countries, and and the United States is the one that's paying all this money, billions of dollars to to abuse these kids. You know, um, it's it's terrible, and um, everybody needs to go see this movie, and everybody needs to try to do whatever they can to 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 you know help the situation. So moving on. So as far as bosses that I I have met and I have dealings with, so that was a good conversation I had with a friend of mine. So anyway, I never met Gambino um, personally, but you know my father always spoke about him. Um, the day of his funeral, I actually got arrested that day. I was supposed to go with my father to the funeral to the to that morning. I was supposed to the day of his burial. I was I didn't wasn't going to the funeral parlor. But my father was going to take me that morning to the burial, and um, I got I I had a turn I got arrested. I walked out of my house, and I got arrested for um, an assault. Um, so I never made it to his burial. I never made it to his funeral. And it's funny because when I got arrested, the detectives in the car said, "Oh, I guess you're not going to the funeral today." You know, they made a joke about it. So I I never met him. The first boss I met or underboss I met was, as everybody knows, was Arneil Dela Croce. He was my father's underboss. He was also my father's captain at one time. Um, I met him at an early age when I first started going around to the Ravenite. And of course, I had many dealings with him. I hung out with his son, Buddy. He was a good friend of mine, you know, um, and uh, Neil, you know, treated me very well. He treated me like a son. He looked out for me. He helped me. He spoke to me. You know, it's funny because... Um, I was about 19 and, you know, the St. Gennaro feast is on in Manhattan on Mobile Street. And back then the mob ran the feast and I had a game on, they finally, Neil, uh, Neil got them to open up the block of the Ravenite. It, it always ended, the feast always ended before the Ravenite block, but then Neil made them open up his block and extend the feast. And I had um a game. I had a fast pitch game that if you, th when you threw the ball, if you guessed what, how many miles per hour you threw it, you won a batting helmet. And I had all the different teams in the major leagues batting helmets, and you got to pick which batting helmet you wanted. So anyway, back then, every family had something to do with the feast. Like one family had the lights, the electric, one family had the garbage, one family had the, had the sausage and peppers. Every family had something to do with the feast, so they all made money. So anyway... The Colombo family that year had the garbage. So I had a game that had no garbage. So this guy comes to my stand and he tells me that I had to give them $50 a night for garbage. So I told the guy, $50 a night for garbage. I don't have no garbage. I have a game. There's no garbage. You know, what garbage? There's no garbage. I said, I says, what are you kidding me? So we were, I was like two stores down from the Ravenite. So I says, well, come on, take, let's take a walk. I said, let, let me find out what's going on. I forget the guy's name. I mean, you're talking a lot of years ago. You know what I mean? Like you're talking, my God, 50, 51 years ago. I mean, I'm talking now. I'm a kid. I'm 19 years old. So anyway, we walk into the Ravenite and O'Neill is at the back table. And I walk in with this guy and I walk up to O'Neill and I go, Neil. This guy wants me to give him $50 a night for garbage. I don't have no garbage. What is he kidding? And Neil told the guy, forget about it. He don't have to give you the $50. And that was, so, you know, those are the little things I had with Neil. Like, you know, he gave me tickets for Frank Sinatra to go see a Frank Sinatra concert. in you know, in 71, right after the Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier fight, the first fight, he gave me tickets in the third row to see Sinatra at Madison Square Garden. I took my wife, Alice, um, you know, I had sit downs with him, with you know, buddy with his son over tabs we signed, but he was always treating us. So that was the first um, boss or under boss that I that I had any dealings with. You know, um, the first official boss I met was, of course, Paul Castellano. You know, it was under the first time I met him was under, you know, bad circumstance. Uh, uh, the Colombo family um, japped one of my brother's friends and killed them. They clipped them in the. Uh, in 88th Street Park, right across the street from my house. And Carmine Persico was very good friends with my father, and he knew what my father was capable about. And, you know, they reached out right away. After they japped us, they reached out right away to Paul Castellano. Uh, and and uh, Paul sent for my father. 
And my father took me with him and Tony Lee and Nikki Carraza and Lenny Di Maria. Um, it was, this was 1977, and we went to Jimmy Brown's club in Brooklyn, who was a powerful captain in the in the Gambino family. We took um, we went to Jimmy Brown's club, and my father had to sit down. I wasn't privileged to sit at the table, but I had to sit at another table, and my father sat with Paul and Tony Lee, and uh, Jimmy Brown was there, and a couple other guys were sitting at the table, and. Um, you know, it was the wind up was that, you know, he was dealing pot in the park and, you know, and he stabbed this guy, Vigenza's son that was with Carmine and um, they got over on us. You know, unfortunately, they got over on us. We didn't know he stabbed this kid, this guy's son and uh, and they got over on us, you know, and it was a tragedy. And um, my brother's friend was was murdered. And, and that's the first time I met Paul Castellano, the first time I had an interaction with him. The comments, well, this is what happened. My brother's best friend, this Irish kid named Tommy, was selling pot marijuana for my brother in 88th Street Park. He was my brother's partner. He was a tough kid, fighter, killer, always had a knife on him, always, always had a knife on him, always. Um, not that that's a good thing. That's just how it was back then. He always had a knife on him. He's driving on 101st Avenue, and he, and he, and, and, and he rear ends, and he's not paying attention. And he, he, at a red light, he, boom, he, he bangs into the back of a car at a red light on 88th Street and 101st Avenue in front of the milk farm. There used to be a milk farm there back then in the 70s. And he hits this car. Three guys get out, his age guys, you know, young guys, three guys get out and they start acting tough and they, they surround them. So right away, they're acting tough. He's a tough kid. Right away, he pulls out the knife and he starts st st stabbing him. One of the kids, he stabs seriously and he punctures the kid's lung. The kid goes down. He Tommy gets in his car. He leaves. The, the ambulance comes. They take the kid to the... The other kids just got superficial wounds. You know, he they were blocking him with their arms. But one kid, he got really good and he punctured the kid's lung. Little be known as to us. We now we know he has a we, we knew he had a beef. We knew he had a fight. We knew one of the guys got stabbed. We knew one of the guys went to the hospital in an ambulance, but we don't know who they are. We didn't even look into it, you know, which was stupid on our part. We didn't look into it, you know. We didn't tell my father that Tommy had a fight on Andre. We thought just thought it was a fight, you know, and Tommy got away. The cops didn't get him. Tommy got away, and that was the end of it. Little be known as to us, the kid that got stabbed was this guy Vigenza's son, who was proposed in the Colombo family. He was an Italian guy from 101st Avenue. He had a cafe on 101st Avenue. He was proposed to be made with, with Carmine Persico, in the, and we didn't know that. We didn't know it was his son. And to get straightened out, to escalate, to get straightened out, if you clip somebody, that's like an automatic button, you know what I mean? If you so he went to Carmine to get permission to clean it. You know, he said the kids around Andy, but he's a drug dealer. He's a you know we could, he's Irish. He's a drug dealer. He stabbed my son. So Carmine gave him permission to jap us, and three guys rolled into the park, and he was with this guy Freddie Pierno, and uh, three guys rolled into the park with hoodies on. It was raining out. They had hoodies on. They, they they ran into 88th Street Park in the rain with hoodies on, and they told, uh, who's Tommy? And Tommy turned and said, I am, and they threw Freddie on the floor, and they blasted Tommy and killed him. So now, if they were to kill Freddie, they would have been in the wrong, because they didn't have permission to kill Freddie. So they threw Freddie on the floor, and they, they killed my brother's best friend, Tommy, which... To this day, my brother still messed up over that. You know, that was his best friend. It was terrible. And Tommy's father was a police officer. That was another thing. Tommy's father was a sergeant or a lieutenant in the NYPD. Um, so it was just a mess, you know, and and they and they and they got over. So driving to the city was, you know, me and I was in the car with Tony Lee and my father. And, you know, my father was upset, you know. Um I, that, you know, we didn't know. He, he, we didn't know. You know, I, I wish if I would have known this wouldn't have happened. They did it right across the street from. They did it right across the street from our house. 
You know, my father was upset about that. How dare they? They did it right across the street from my house. And then when we went, got to the sit down, Paul, who wasn't a gangster or a killer, like now if John Gotti was the boss, it might have been a different story. If John Gotti was the boss, they might have never even did something like that because they knew Paul wasn't a gangster. They knew Paul was a businessman. So they knew they could, you know, and, and they got away with it. And Paul told my father, you know, the kid was selling pot. So right away now, my father's got to bite his tongue because, you know, Paul was deadly against selling drugs. And back then, marijuana was considered just a drug, just as much as heroin was considered a drug. He said, you know, this kid was selling pot. They had He was stealing pot at that time. He stabbed this kid, the guy's son. The guy almost died. You know, um, I know you want to get even, but we have to give them a pass on this one. And now that was it. My father had to, you know, put his tail between his legs and... Uh, and and you know my brother was out of his mind when my father told him he had to, we had to take a we had to give them a pass, and um, you know that was it. And it's funny because the Jens, the one of the shooters, wind up getting murdered by his own crew, because we found out who the three guys were. It was the Jens and these other two guys that were with him, and uh, Vinny Vinny was the other guy's name. Vinny had blue blue eyes. This guy he had like like serious blue eyes and 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 freddie saw his eyes and knew it was him Vinny, i forget the guy's last name i have it i got a brain lock i know the guy's name i, I can't they wind up killing him his own crew the Jens, his own crew killed this kid they they killed him they stabbed him they tied him up with chicken wire with barbed wire and they threw him in a dumpster years later because he was a he was a crazy kid so that was the situation with that, you know, and we had and we had a we had a we had to give them a pass. You know, once the boss says the, you know, the boss is the boss is the boss, and you know, and, and that was it. And um, and we had to give them a pass. You know, or maybe if we had a different boss at the time, it might have been a different story. You know, but um that was it. So that was the situation with that.